how in the hell do you people in the northern or colder climates put up with this crap? <sighs> that shouldn't happen here. But at least I got me some sweet ass gloves. <sighs> That's ridiculous. I have to put on my damn mask just so I can keep warmth on my face. Anyway, welcome back everybody. It's been a little while because, you know, it's been cloudy as hell. This is the first night in six days that I've gotten to use the telescope. The moon is up there, Mars is right next to it. I need to hurry up and get this tutorial done because Mars is at a position where it hasn't been yet. I'm trying to do a rotation map and all kind of other crap, but I need to get that. I think that details like 11 or 12 o'clock. So I gotta get some shots in on that also. So this will be the second video in the little Instagram series thingy. And this is gonna be on the moon. And namely, number one, how to get sharp moon pictures. And number two, how to get colorful moon pictures. So obviously camera, telescope. And so what we're gonna do is, after you're aligned and everything, go to the live view on your moon and your telescope might not you know have this much focal length or whatever so you should be able to get a full lunar disc but in case you can't you know i go to the northern or southern hemisphere and take my pictures and then go to the other one and take the other pictures but this applies to everybody so what you want to do is you want to use live view zoom zoom in as far as you can on the planet you want to pick out a high contrast area where there's sharp details and basically just focus absolutely best you can I gotta move my gloves out so I can make my points. Point number one, shooting her off. Point number two, use a higher ISO so you can have a faster shutter speed. Shooting at extremely high magnifications, we're gonna shoot 40 pictures for a stack, but you wanna you know, make sure that you have the sharpest detail in those 40 pictures, if at all possible. Um, if your tracking isn't dead on, especially the, the higher the magnification you go, then a slower shutter speed for the sake of lower ISO could cause blur, which you won't find out until tomorrow when you start zooming in. And by that point, it's too late. Then you gotta wait till the next night and try it all over again. Who wants to do all that? I am at ISO 800 and a shutter speed of one one thousandth of a second. And that's at F10. So what I'll do is, is I will take a test shot and then check the histogram because the histogram never lies so we'll do that now and also have an intervalometer so i don't have to touch the scope or the mount or anything we're clipped over here on the black because that's the background all the information for the moon is right in the middle which is just where we want it so i know those settings are good so we will turn live view off to save battery and now what i want to do is i'm going to take 40 shots so we'll do that now all right so we got 40 shots done turn our live view back on and since I have to shoot in two hemispheres, I'll go to the northern hemisphere now, and then we'll do the same thing, 40 more shots. And that's it. You get your 40 shots of the moon and take your happy ass inside where it's warm and we will get started on the processing. I got frostbite last night. Still trying to warm up the extremities a little bit. We're back in the house. So we have our 40 moon pictures that we took last night, but we can't put those directly into AutoStackert because AutoStackert doesn't recognize raw files. So we have to run them through PIP first. So we'll take our 40, drag and drop them over. And you can see it's the bottom half of the moon because big telescope, small field of view, northern and southern hemisphere. So we'll just go ahead and do planetary. The biggest thing that you want to make sure is that the convert to monochrome is not enabled. So we're not even going to bother with the object detection or anything. All we want to do is convert the raw file to TIFF in the fastest way possible. Output TIFF start. And then we'll do the same thing to the other 40 for the northern hemisphere, which you don't have to do, obviously, uh, if you just have a full lunar disk. So I'll be back up with you in AutoStacker. 
So we got the 40 images opened up in AutoStacker and this is where you might encounter some more problems. And I didn't find this out until a couple weeks ago. Like, so since I had to take two separate images or two separate segments of the moon, I could try the planet center of gravity, but sometimes it'll cut off and make really weird artifacts. So I use the surface and sometimes the anchor box doesn't work too well. Well, what I found, I can't remember who I saw it from, but if you push the number keys on your keyboard, you can make the box smaller, which really comes in handy. So what will happen is, is if your box is the wrong size and you go to analyze it, because when you use the surface image stabilization, you can't stack it without analyzing it. If your anchor box is the wrong size or in the wrong place, it'll throw up an error on the surface image stabilization and it won't let you stack it. So I have a smaller align box now. I will go to Copernicus. I will change the noise to a smaller number and analyze. And we'll see what happens. So you can see our quality graph drops pretty significantly. Let's go through it just in case. Because, I mean, nothing should have really changed. I mean, I don't see any big differences anywhere. But instead of stacking all 40, we can go ahead and stack 30. RGB align, save in folders, drizzle off. Definitely drizzle off. Especially if you're using a big old DSLR. Now, the align boxes. You want to use fairly large align boxes. If you look over here on the Terminator, it did not select the darker mare and stuff over here. And that's good because you don't want to select that because that could lead to artifacts and there's really not any detail to stack to over here. You want to stack to only the brighter side. So 304 pixel align boxes gives us 293 align points and we will stack this one and I'll go ahead and stack the other one and then for those who are having to do a panorama we'll head on over to Microsoft Ice after this so just stay tuned. So if you had to end up doing multiple frames, the entire disk of the moon, you have to stitch those together. And you want to do that before any other edits. So what we'll do is we'll open those in Microsoft Ice, which is free. By far the best panorama software I've ever used because I ain't paying for any. So we'll move that one over, move that one over, and we'll stitch. Now we have a moon. Crop, export, file format, TIFF. And you can see our moon is 5,894 pixels by 5,512 pixels. So we should be able to open it in Registax. Now, depending on the size of the camera you use and the size of the final image, you won't be able to open it in Registax because Registax doesn't support anything above 6,200 pixels, I don't think. Unsupported TIFF format. Okay, no big deal. We got to work around here. So we'll go to Photoshop, open the TIFF, resave the TIFF, and then try it in Registax. So when I opened it up in Photoshop, it opened up as a layer and not as a flattened image. So make sure you flatten it before you save it again as a TIFF and then open it up in Registax. See, we're just learning stuff all the time. So now what you want to do is find an area of fairly good contrast. Yeah, how about right here? So you have the dark background sky, you have parts of the Terminator, and then you have the darker Mare and the lighter Ejecta. So you have a good mix of everything. So in Registax, you want to click on you know, the center of your frame. And what that'll do is that'll be your processing area. So now you start processing and see what happens. Now, the one thing that you have to be extremely careful of, especially in Registax, because it is such a powerful tool, is over sharpening. Because when you get on to the later steps in Photoshop, removing the sharpening is almost impossible and will create artifacts. You can always sharpen an image more, but it's a lot harder to unsharpen an image later on, especially once you start getting the color in there. So 
so now you want to show full image and so you can see the part we were working on was just that little B spot way up there so now we'll do all which will take a while depending on again your camera sensor size and all that okay so now if we zoom in we got some pretty good detail not really over sharpen that much so now we'll just save it open up Photoshop so now we got our moon image open up in Photoshop the very first thing we're gonna do is make a make a duplicate and then we'll go to filter camera raw filter so in here we're gonna do the basic white balance we'll start adding saturation make some exposure changes and you'll see how as we progress the layers will actually provide the saturation not just cranking up the saturation slider so first things first go to calibration on all three saturations go to 100 and you can see it added color but it didn't add a bunch of saturation so now we can go to saturation or vibrant saturation go to 100 on both of those now you can see the color cast that we have we will just adjust the tint and temperature to get a balance that we like and if you watch the histogram up here you want to try to get the red blue and green as close to each other as possible that's pretty close so now we can add some exposure Now that we've made some adjustments, we'll go back and check up on our white balance here. So now if you look at the histogram, most of the colors are all pretty contained evenly with each other. From here, we will drop the vibrance and leave the saturation at 100. So now we've added saturation to each color channel and we've added saturation to the entire image. And you can see it's still not saturated, which is exactly what we want. We'll go ahead and leave everything else alone for now. That's our first layer. See? So already, we're here. So now we'll make another layer and open up Camera Raw again. We're back in Camera Raw with our adjustment layer copy. And again, we'll go down to Calibration and go to 100 on all of them. Now, you can see just how much smoother the difference of color is. We will up the vibrance and saturation again. And this should really allow us to fine tune our colors. So now you're starting to see the, the dark blues over here, the light blues up there, light blues around Tycho. So now what you can do is go to your color mixer and just adjust the hues as you like. Okay. So now that that's done, take off the vibrance, drop the saturation. We definitely have color. It's not oversaturated. It's real subtle. You know, it's looking good. Like Aristarchus way over here already has that blue to it, which is great because it's, you know, the brightest crater on this side of the moon. So it has that bluish tint. Tycho, the rays are starting to get that little light blue aqua tint. The only thing I don't like is down here you have, I guess that would be chromatic aberration on these craters so we will go ahead and try to take that out with a little defringing yeah the only problem is that now that little bit of defringing messed up our color again so we'll go back up increase vibrance saturation Okay, much better. So now you can definitely look at the histogram. We've got our lumps. All the colors pretty much match up. Uh, did a couple more contrast adjustments. The biggest issue I had was there was a lot of color noise. So when I got rid of the color noise, it changed the color cast by readjusting the temperature and tint. Now it's a whole lot more balanced and all that. So we'll go ahead and okay that. So now at this point, the moon, as far as tonal changes and contrast and all that, is pretty much done. So now it's just pretty much adding the selective saturation. 
So we'll make another layer, go back to the camera roll filter. We'll try to do the calibration again, just because that gives it a little bit more control. And remember on the calibration, you can actually tweak the hues of each of the primary colors also. So like if you want to see what the red does, if you move the hue, definitely like that better. Since all of your other adjustments are on separate layers, you can go a little bit more crazy with this layer and just focus on getting the color how you want it and overdo it just a little bit. I kind of like that. Still has the damn green though. So we'll go back to optics, try to get rid of that green. I'd say it's close enough. So the only thing that we've changed on this entire layer is color. So we'll go ahead and hit okay. So now change this blend mode to color and just lower the opacity. But that's how you take a picture and make a pretty colorful moon and the minerals and all that what not just a bunch of saturation just all the way to the right. All the saturation, give it all. I think it's time for a nap <laughs> and some food. Food and an app. Can't go wrong with it. I guess we'll go back outside to finish this off. Too damn cold out there. We got the moon shots. So, I guess if this is the end of the video, you already saw how the moon stuff was made. I just did a couple of sequences of Mars and Nope, can't do it. Going inside, packing all this crap up, and gonna go jog in place or something. Can't feel my face, can't feel my fingers. As far as the moon stuff goes, I hope y'all enjoyed that. Happy Halloween. Until next time, see y'all later.